Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Congrats. Thank you. You guys good? You happy with the win, Felice? Are you satisfied with it? I'm very happy with the win. I mean, you know, not every fight is going to be a dominant performance. You know, my last three fights were dominant performances. Um, this fight also, you know, Courtney had a lot of a, re a lot of reach on me. You know, so we were boxing the whole time, and um, I felt like I landed, you know, the better shots. And and it's hard too because because of the reach. But I mean, a win's a win. You can't really be upset with a win. I felt like. I wanted to let my hands go a little bit more, but just again because of the reach and every time, like she knew that she was timing me, and she, you know, I'm smart enough to know that like every time I wanted to come in and close the distance, she would try to, you know, she'd throw that lead uppercut or the the rear uppercut, or you know, she'd counter me. So she was anticipating it. Plus, I was listening to her corner too, so I was kind of uh, one step uh, one step ahead just because I knew what she was anticipating me doing. Do you so. usually do that? Listen to the corner. I always listen to my opponent's corner. Why? So I guess I should um, just so that I, I listen. To, I, I kind of have tunnel vision. Like I only hear my, my corner and my opponent's corner. And I listen to my opponent's corner because then I know, I know that they were, they were saying she's going to watch. She's, she, next she's going to come in with that lead left. Um, when she, she's, about to, she's about to step in to punch. You know, so I know what they think I'm going to do. So I don't do it or I do something different. I shouldn't tell that, you know, because now everybody's going to start talking in code or Portuguese or something. How surprised were you that she kind of went full Nick Diaz in this fight at getting in your face? Oh, we both went yeah. full on Nick yeah. Diaz, whatever. Um, <laughs> I think she was, she was, she got a little upset because I, I got her with a shot and she, I saw it on her face. And I don't know, fighters get emotional. Um, she flicked a booger at me. It was great. I mean, it's entertaining for the fans. Like, I like that. I like being in entertaining fights. Um, I'm not mad at her. Uh, <laughs> But um, it was cool. I thought I, I, I was uh, I was um, entertained by it. I thought it was entertaining. Were you was nervous hearing the scores read, or did you, were you confident you thought you had the W? I definitely thought I had the W, but again, you never know with judges. And um, you know, it was hard to tell just because uh, she did have the range on me, and I felt like I landed more shots. Um, you know, she she was she was wanting to lure me in with punches and I could see that. So I had to I had to pick and choose my shots. When am I gonna come in? Or if I come in, I have to kinda use different body movements and come in in a different way than she thinks I'm gonna come in because otherwise I'm gonna get countered. Who do you want next after this fight? This big win here. I know, it's four in a row. I think uh, I, I kind of am coming in like a dark horse, like everybody's just underestimating me and um, um, but I don't really care, honestly. Every time I think, I, you know, I want somebody, they give me somebody else, and so I really don't give a shit. Do you feel like you're getting the respect now? Uh, you were the betting favor going into this fight. It feels like people are finally coming around and giving you the do. I actually feel like I, I fight better when I'm in the underdog, but I actually don't really know when I'm the underdog. I don't really pay too much attention. I usually can tell when I am, and, um, yeah, you know, tides are changing a little bit. I think it's great because years ago people always kind of thought I was just this this uh, girly fighter who cared more about my looks than my fighting and people would say oh you know she gets all this attention or she gets opportunities or she gets sponsors because you know because she's whatever she shows her ass or you know stuff like that and um, now I think people are actually talking about my skills and and I feel like I've I've commanded some respect and you know you can't four fight I'm on a four fight win streak I don't really know anybody in the Strawweight division right now who's on a four fight win streak so I think there's something to be said uh, and that. How close do you think you are to a title shot? You mentioned the four wins. That's pretty impressive. Uh, you know, I would say I'm pretty close. Um, the belt just changed ha changed hands, and I feel like the number one, two, three, what four contenders have all fought for the belt. Um, I would think what would be fair would maybe be the winner of like the the Tisha Michelle Waterson fight to get the um, to get the next title shot, and then you know who knows. Um, I don't I don't really um, put too much stock in what's what's going to happen because it's the USC makes the decisions, Perfect you know. situation, when do you fight next? When, when, uh, when are you looking at? Definitely not till after Christmas and New Year's because I really enjoy my Christmas and I want to enjoy it fully. Um, so maybe February. <laughs> what, what, was, it, was it a booger or was it blood that she threw at you? Because it looked like it was blood. It was definitely blood. It was a big chunk of blood that Courtney flicked at me. Um, and I, I don't know. It might have hit me. It might have landed on me. I guess that's uh, my thing is I always get 
bodily fluids thrown at me in fights. <laughs> Has that ever happened? That's happened to you? Oh, I mean, the, the Justine Kish was a little different. Is that what you're referring to? Uh, that, yes. Okay. Sorry. A bit different. <laughs> <laughs> like where someone like intentionally throws blood at you or something? <laughs> well, I mean, usually you can't intentionally throw blood. Like you can only throw it if it's a chunk of blood, which means I must have done something to her nose. Um, no one's ever done that to me. Um, like I said, I don't, I'm not really mad about it. I, I think most people would be mad and think it was like disrespectful, but we were in the heat of the moment. We were both cussing at each other and. Um, Where did it hit you? Or did it hit? I think it hit me somewhere. Okay. I don't know. After I saw it on the canvas afterwards. <laughs> after, the, after the fight last, um, last time, you got a little emotional talking about, you know, the way the UFC treats you and things like that. Do you feel like things have, have changed? Are you feeling more respect? Um, you know, I'm feeling a little bit more love, not like an overwhelming amount, um, but I've just kind of realized that like I've always kind of paved my own path and done my own thing and I have a good support system behind me and I have people who believe in me and you know if the, the UFC can believe in me or they cannot but they at this point they really can't deny me you know I'm on a four fight win streak and um, yeah like I think there's just so many people in the mix um, uh, I don't I'm not gonna say I feel like an overwhelming amount of love but is what it is you know I'm not gonna cry about it anymore I cried last time I was really emotional what's going through your head when you know it's gonna be a split decision you know, we saw your eyes were closed what are you thinking at that moment um, the final Bruce Buffer announcement? I was just saying please 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 you know um, I felt like I won so um, I I mean it's just one of those things it's just all you can do is hold your breath and pray and um, wait for the decision and you know you can't I guess you can't really be mad like if it goes either way just because if it is a close fight you know on any given day three other judges could have scored it differently you know um, so I'm thankful and um, Courtney was a tough fight and um, but one person's got to win by the way how do you decide what colors you put in your hair and on your nails oh this is, is that I'm glad you talked about that I actually just kind of have in my head like colors that I like but um I, um, I was like, oh, purple and gold. I love purple and gold, and that would be cool in my hair. Um, and my when I won the IKF uh, women's bantamweight, it was bantamweight, but the, the weight classes in um, Muay Thai are different, so it was, we fought at 120. But when I fought for the IKF title, uh, when I was a kickboxer or Muay Thai fighter, um, I did purple and gold. Purple and gold are signs of the colors of royalty, and this is actually my 50th fight. So then 50, um, gold gold is for 50th anniversary, so I thought purple and gold were very fitting. Um, and so, you know, I used to do all my themes, so everything was a little bit more sentimental and planned out, but I just really like the colors. <laughs> and purple and gold, again, was when uh, I, I won my IKF title, so I thought it was, it was kind of fitting. Um, it's been four wins in a row in the UFC. You're a top 10 fighter in the division. Uh, likely the best run of your career. What changes or anything can you credit to this recent run? Um, you know, I didn't realize that years and years of uh, putting my body through stress and dieting and not really dieting, starving myself to, to cut weight and make weight and not really listening to the people that were trying to help me. Um, just kind of being stubborn and thinking that, you know, I knew what was best. Um, I. I actually like I always talk about how you know um, you know everybody always talks about my loss now I'm five and one in the UFC my the Paige Van Zant fight and you know people can say what they want but you can tell that that was not me in there something happened to me physically and I'm grateful now for that loss because that was the fight that made me realize like because I physically couldn't move my body and after that fight um, a doctor that I had um, known had worked with other fighters that um, from my team Dr. Cowan. Um, had, like he watched the fight and he w he called my manager and he said that was not Felice in there she had an adrenaline dump I want to run labs on her I want to help her I know I can fix her I know I know she's a better fighter than what you know she just showed and and I can I can help her and um, I took uh, 15 months off and we ran labs and I was depleted in cortisol like my, my levels were all off um, everywhere all across the board so. We took time to build back up, and um, I started eating for for uh, performance, not for you know looks or weight cut. Um, 
I started just, I changed everything. I started enjoying the process more. Um, and I think because I wasn't starving myself anymore and because my body was, was feeling good, my body wasn't just like going through the motions, trying to get through training. Cause that's how it was. I used to, I love fighting for the first like eight, nine years. I've been fighting for 15 years now. And then I just stopped loving it because everything became about the weight cut and because of the weight cut and starving myself, like every training session I was just getting through. I was kind of like a zombie. And um, I credit a lot to, you know, my doctor um, fixing me, you know, realizing that I'm an elite athlete and there's certain things that I need to perform. And, you know, you don't realize that when, because the sport's grown so much. So there weren't a lot of those people out there to help you. Now we have people in the US, you know, where, you know, women have the opportunity to be in the UFC and the sport's grown so much. So now people are coming out of the, you know, like you have all these nutritionists out there. You have, you know, now we have a, a big UFC facility that has, you know, we can go there anytime we want. We can, we're taking care of more as athletes. I think before, as MMA fighters, you're just kind of, you're just kind of like trying to figure things out on your own. And um, I've been blessed to have come across, you know, good people that have, have wanted to help me and I've, I've listened to them. And um, I guess, you know, there's no I in team and um, it's not just me. I have a great team behind me. I have a great manager. My manager, uh, Brian Butler, has believed in me from, he's, he's always believed in me. You know, all, all the people behind me believed in me and worked with me before women were in the UFC. You know, now it's, it's great. Like, oh, let's be, get behind this girl. Yeah, it's easy to get behind somebody when you see the light at the end of the tunnel. But before, it was just, you know, I don't know. I, I don't even know the question anymore. <laughs> It was a chunk. It was a booger. It was a booger chunk. It was a booger blood chunk. <laughs> a I just don't want to booger bludgeoning. <laughs> it was like. I just wanted to confirm. It was chunky. That's why she flicked it at me, and it was laying on the floor, and I stepped over it. It was like a worm, <laughs> like in the in the water in the pond when it rains. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to misquote you. Well, I don't know what, what quote you're going to take out of that now. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thanks. What about Damon? Damon didn't ask me anything. <laughs>